Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears and this is the all new KGM Torres. Now, as some of you might remember, Sangyong has undergone a bit of a rebranding and is now known as KGM. And the Torres is the first model to arrive since that rebranding. Now, it sits between the smaller Corando and the larger seven-seater Rexton. But it's not just a new model in the lineup. It sits on an all-new platform, has an all-new design language, and is also available as a full EV. Now, if you want to watch my review of the electric version of the Torres, please click up in the top right hand corner. And this is where I say a big thank you to KGM because they've allowed me to review both the ICE and EV versions of the Torres back to back. So I really do appreciate that. Now I've had this Torres for a week and I'm gonna answer a couple of big questions. Number one, what's it like? And number two, as the Torres sits in a highly competitive segment with some big name players, does the Torres have any little tricks hidden up its sleeve to make it stand out from the crowd? Well, stick with me to find out. Now, when it comes to the Torres' styling, I actually think it's a very handsome and distinctive looking SUV. It definitely looks rough and ready when you first see it. However, when you take a closer look, you do find that there are a lot of styling traits that you would have seen from other brands and SUVs of yesteryear. Now that is deliberate because KGM say they want the Torres to kind of pay homage to those classic SUVs. So you've got kind of hints of Jeep in the front. You've got these very distinctive 3D lights at the front, which are meant to resemble the Big Dipper Star Constellation. However, I do see hints of Range Rover Evoque. You've got a classic body shape, which looks like a Land Rover Discovery or possibly an old Range Rover. And at the back, yes, we can see hints of Land Rover Discovery, but also previous generation Range Rover in that tail light design. So overall, with all these little design traits, it does actually make a very distinctive looking car. However, these little tie downs here are just for aesthetic purposes only. But let me know what you think of the Torres's design in the comments section below. Do you think KGM have been a little bit too silly having all these little design traits from other brands, or do you think it stands out on its own? Let me know. But on that note, I think it's time we stop looking at the exterior of the new Torres and see what KGM have done with the interior. Sat in the front of the Torres, you are greeted by a very comfortable, driver-centric, and actually really nicely designed interior. Now, you would be forgiven if you had Hyundai Group vibes being sat here in the front of the Torres, and I definitely can see hints of the Kia EV6 electric vehicle in its design, and that's no bad thing. Now, when it comes to getting in and out of the Torres, it's really easy because of that raised seated position. This is a mid-sized SUV after all. So if you do suffer from any kind of mobility issues, then this is definitely one car to look at. But I will mention that there's no grab handle here for the driver, but there is for the front passenger. And then on this K40 trim, I've got fully electric adjustable seats with fully electric adjustable lumbar support. So that is a bonus. And then with the steering, having both rake and reach adjustment, means they're getting the ideal driving position is easy. And when it comes to interior quality, this is also another highlight. We've got soft touch plastics here on top of the dash and on the doors as well. We've got this contrasting copper stitching, and you can see it here as well in the interior design, which is definitely a highlight for me. And then we've got this little kind of faux carbon effect trim here on the dashboard. But yes, lower down, we have got some hard scratchy plastics there, which you would expect in this type of car. So it is actually a real pleasant surprise to see soft touch plastics on the dash, but it does give that air of quality. And like I said, I do like this kind of copper design here with the little contrasting stripes. You do get that actually mirrored down here on one of the cubby spaces, which is pretty cool. So yeah, first impressions when you sit in the Torres's interior is, it feels like a Korean car, but not as you know it. Cubby spaces in the Torres are actually very impressive. We've got some massive door pockets where you can get a couple large bottles of drink in there. Now they're not lined with any fabric, so loose items will rattle around a bit, but I will forgive that because 
They're really well designed and they are massive. Now here on the center console and dash, kind of lower down, we got a little rubberized tray area where we got two USB-C charging inputs and a 12 volt socket. Underneath there, we, like I said, we got this rubber lined area as well, where you can store some larger items. Very nice as well. I do like the way it's designed. Here on the kind of center console, which is the floating center console part, we got this little tray area, which is rubberized with a little hole in it, which is actually perfect to connect your USB-C cable to your phone you have got apple carplay and android auto but it is tethered only so it does mean that your phone can sit here whilst connected up and you can use carplay and android auto so again i really love that feature we then have a couple of cup holders just behind there again rubber lined with a couple of plastic grippers and they are actually of a decent size to kind of hold a can of drink or perhaps a coffee cup there in place one of them is a little bit more shallow than the other so just be wary if you put any taller cups in there because if you go around the corner with a bit of excitement it might kind of roll around a little bit but it shouldn't fall out now just behind there on this k40 trim we have got your wireless charging pad so that's very handy if you've got perhaps a passenger who wants to charge his mobile device but not connect up to the carplay or android auto we then got your armrest with a little button there with a good amount of space underneath and it is lined with fabric so that is very handy however the armrest doesn't move so that's just something to be aware of there we've then got the glove box which is of a decent size and shape it's not lined with any fabric or rubber but there's no book pack in there it's actually underneath the boot floor so you can make use of all of that available space but just be aware loose items will make some noise in there so yeah, again, when it comes to the cubby spaces here in the Torres, I am actually really impressed. Those door pockets, yeah, definitely a lot of manufacturers could take note of those because they're really nicely designed. And like I said, can hold a couple of large bottles in there. Now, one thing you'll definitely notice about the Torres's interior is the lack of physical buttons in here. So that does mean that things like dual zone climate control are done via the infotainment screen. In terms of physical buttons, we have got your rocker switch for the gear select. We've got your steering wheel controls, where on the left-hand side, it's your voice, media, and communication controls. Right-hand side, we've got your radar-guided cruise control controls, and then the controls for the digital dashboard display operating the menu system. Then a couple of buttons on the right-hand side to deal with your windows and adjusting your mirrors. So that means then we have to move on to the infotainment system and the digital dashboard display. Both of them 12.3 inch displays. Again, another reason why you might feel that you're sat in a Hyundai Group product. But here's the good thing. The infotainment system is actually pretty decent. And as I mentioned, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They are wired only, not wireless. But the actual responses from the system are very rapid and quick. The menus are pretty easy to operate whilst you're on the move. And if you've got it on the main kind of infotainment home screen, you've got a little pull down from the top where you can operate things like your drive mode select and a couple of other functions as well. And then you've got one from the right hand side that moves to the left and kind of covers about a third of the screen, but that covers your dual zone climate controls. And it's a nice little quick system where if you rest your hand on top, you can use your thumb to operate those systems, which I really do like, because you have got things like heated and ventilated seats. So you definitely want to be able to operate those when on the move. Now there is a little bit of a negative and that's that the shortcut buttons are on the left hand side, especially as well when you have Apple CarPlay on. So you do have to reach a little bit in order to use them. But that's really the main niggle. Now you have got a built-in sat lav system on this K40 trim. It is a TomTom based system. But if you've got your Apple CarPlay or Android also connected, then of course you can look at using Google Maps. But I have found it to be a very decent system. Like I said, it is responsive. The graphics are pretty clear as well. Some of the icons can be a little bit smaller, especially when you kind of go into the sub menus. But for the most part, you'll get everything that you wanted kind of set up straight away. And then you'll just adjust things like the dual zone climate control when you're driving as and when. And then we move on to the digital dashboard display, which is a new display for KGM, definitely different from what we've seen from Sangyong. And again, it's a very nice system, does again give me hints of Hyundai Group um, display. And using the little rocker switch and button on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you can go through the various menus on there 
which is pretty decent. And you can even have the maps come up on that screen as well. So I was pleasantly surprised with the infotainment system. It is actually a decent and responsive system. It's not going to blow your mind in terms of innovation or anything like that. But because you've got all these systems operated via the screen, I'm so glad that they work. That's the kind of key thing. There's no real lag and everything just kind of works the way it should do. So I am really impressed by that. So yeah, when you sat here in the front of the Torres, I love all the copper accents. It's got a really nice driver centric design. Yes, like I said, it's got hints of the Kia EV6, but it is comfortable. And again, a highlight being that infotainment screen and some of the cubby spaces. And on that note, I think it's time we leave the front of the Torres and see what it's like for rear passengers. Sat in the back of the Torres, this is definitely one of the highlights to the car, the amount of space you got back here. Now I will say first, just be careful getting in and out of the Torres because the doors do open pretty wide, but there is an exposed plastic hump here that you might catch yourself on as you're getting in and out, and you have got grab handles here as well. Now that driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And look at the amount of knee room I've got. I can tuck my feet underneath the driver's seat and check out that for headroom. You can easily get a couple of six footers sat in the back of the Torres for a long journey. The only thing I would say is with this dark headlining, yes, it can feel a little bit dark and gloomy. So I would love to see a sunroof added at some point, maybe to the facelifted Torres. But you could easily get two adults sat in the back of the Torres or three kids. Now, speaking of kids, we got Isofix supports on the outer seats. There's no plastic covers on them. You've just got to negotiate the leather. So it can be a little bit tricky of fixing a child seat. Now, when it comes to cubby spaces, just like the front, we've got massive door pockets where you can get a large bottle of drink in there. Again, they're not lined with any fabric. We've got our airplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats. We've got our armrest with a couple of extra cup holders as well, which is very handy. I will mention there's no through loading into the boot area. But when it comes to features, down here we have got a couple of vents. We've got two USB-C charging inputs, which is very handy. But next to them, we've got two little rubber tray areas, which are very handy to store your phone whilst they're charging. So it's really nice to see that little air of quality there with them being rubber lined, so your phone's not gonna roll around anywhere. Also, in regards to features, we have got heated outer seats. We have got some blinds here as well, so you can keep the sun out of your kids' faces. The windows themselves actually are really massive. They are tinted, but allow a lot of light in, and they do open all the way down. So in terms of features back here in the Torres, there are plenty of them along to go with that space. So I am really impressed by that. But the only kind of niggle I would say is you can't do anything with the bench. You can't slide it forward or back or recline the seats. But that is a minor criticism because, I mean, yeah, just look at the amount of space I've got back here and those cubby holes as well. So yeah, being sat here in the back of the Torres, it is actually one of the highlights of the car and will definitely suit families, both young and old. And on that note, I think it's time we leave the rear seat area and we see what that boot is like. So here at the back of the Torres, you can clearly see a few of the design influences from the SUVs of yesteryear that have gone into the rear of the car, namely from the likes of the Toyota RAV4, the Land Rover Discovery, and also that rear tail light design, which looks to have come from the previous generation Range Rover. It's just a shame that this hump here and the handle are purely aesthetic and the boot does open in a normal way. However, you remember me saying about the Torres having a couple of tricks up its sleeve? Well, if I get the boot open, you are presented with 703 litres of space, which instantly puts the Torres at the top of the class. And as you can see, you are greeted with a massive wide square load area. So it's absolutely brilliant for loading, say a couple of large suitcases or plenty of weekend bags. Now we have got an accessory here, which is a bit of a bumper protector, which is very handy, but the boot lip itself is actually really nice and flat. The only thing I would say is, yeah, it is a little bit high, so it could be a bit difficult for dogs to jump in and out of, or if you are loading any large bulky items or something like a wheelchair or a mobility scooter, because with that boot capacity and that rear passenger space, 
this is a perfect car for those on mobility, and that's just my opinion. But it's not devoid of features either. We have got a 12 volt socket, a couple of little cubby spaces each side with an elastic bit of strapping to hold items in place. You can actually turn off and on the interior lights for the boot area. That's something that's quite handy as well. And you have got plenty of underfloor storage. And as I mentioned, you've got the book pack there as well. It's not in the glove box. But if you do decide to go for the all wheel drive version of the Torres, then you do get a space saver spare wheel as standard. So that is pretty impressive. What I also like as well is that you can put the tonneau cover underneath the boot floor. So if you do want to carry any large bulky items, you don't have to leave that at home. And then to get the rear seats down, you do have to go to the side or rear passenger doors in order to get them down. You don't have a completely flat load area. There is a little bit of an incline, but it is still a hugely practical car and does pretty much turn into a bit of a minivan. So yeah, when it comes to the boot space of the Torres, I've got no complaints because that is just absolutely brilliant. And it even comes with the convenience feature like on Hyundai Group cars, where all I have to do is walk up to the boot area with the key in my pocket and it will open after several seconds. So none of this waving your foot underneath the bumper in order to trip a sensor because you might just end up tripping over yourself. So yeah, the boot area of the Torres is an absolutely massive highlight along with the rear passenger space. So I think that's all that's left to say now is um, let's get the boot down and take it for a drive. Once you start driving the Torres, first impressions, I'm gonna say are pretty good. It is a comfortable and easy car to drive. Now, because this is a mid-sized SUV and you've got that raised seating position, visibility, I'm gonna say it's pretty good, but not the best. Now, because of that raised seating position, I've got a commanding view of the road ahead. The A-pillars are a little bit thick and chunky, but I've not found myself looking around them at any junctions. The wing mirrors are of a lovely size and shape. I do like the kind of square chunky look on them, and I have got blind spot monitoring. However, when I look over my shoulder, I do find I've got a very thick C-pillar and that's because of that external panel, which is there for aesthetic reasons. So what that means is, is it does create a bit of a blind spot, but like I said, fortunately, I have got blind spot monitoring as standard on this trim. And then rear visibility, I'm gonna say is okay, but once again, because KGM have styled that kind of fake spare wheel hump in the boot lid, it does kind of, take a chunk away of your visibility, but it's actually not too bad. One thing I am happy with is that the rear uh, passenger headrests don't obstruct your view. So yeah, the visibility is kind of, it's okay. There are rivals out there that do have better all round visibility, but of course the Torres is going for that classic SUV look, like an old Land Rover, or maybe even you could say, a bit like the up and coming Hyundai Santa Fe because that is also a very boxy car. So yeah, first impressions when you start driving, the Torres are pretty good. It is a comfortable car to be in and it is easy to drive as well, but visibility, yeah, could be better. Now there are two trim levels available in the Torres range. There is the entry level K30 and the top of the range K40, which is what I've got here. But with the K40, you do get the choice to go for front or all wheel drive. So that is something, especially if you plan on driving on any kind of loose gravel surfaces or dirt tracks, and therefore you've got that kind of confidence with the all wheel drive system. But if you're not, I would personally recommend going for the K40 front wheel drive. You get all of the standard equipment for the top of the range version. And because it's a little bit lighter, than the all wheel drive version, it is a tiny bit more economical. So that's just something to consider. But I will say one thing is that I would like to see or know that if you went for the K40, if you could get the K30's alloy wheels, which are 18 inches, because with this K40, you do get 20s and they are very attractive and they look great, but they do hamper the ride somewhat. So that's just a question I want to put out there. 
The other reason as well I would recommend going for the K40 is you do get a couple of extra luxuries like ventilated seats, but you also get things like that blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alerts, uh, just to name a couple of safety extras there. So that's another reason to definitely look at the K40. But yeah, if you do need that all wheel drive, then by all means go for the K40 all wheel drive. But personally, go for the K40 front wheel drive but I do ask the question if you could get those smaller alloy wheels. Now, when it comes to powering the Torres, it's really lovely and simple. There's one engine available. It is a 1.5 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, producing 161 brake horsepower and 280 Newton meters of torque. And that goes through a six speed automatic gearbox to either the front or all four wheels, depending on which trim level you go for. And in regards to performance, well, KGM say that my 0-62 time should be around 10.8 seconds, which isn't the most impressive, but the engine has got a liveliness to it, and it actually doesn't feel that slow. There is a really nice urgency from the engine. And also from the gearbox as well, it's nice and seamless and smooth. You can barely hear the changes. And even when I put my foot down, that's actually very responsive for an automatic. I've driven dual clutch systems, which actually have a little bit more hesitation when you put your foot down and try and catch it off guard. Of course, you have got the flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel if you wanna manually control them, but you can't kind of select it on the gear selector you have to kind of just go ahead and use those paddles so when it comes to the kind of the engine uh, its performance along with the gearbox it's a really nice combination however it's not all perfect because we now need to talk about economy <clears throat> kgm say on a combined cycle and a wltp cycle i should get around 28.3 miles per gallon and I'm sorry KGM, but in this class, that's just not good enough. The one big positive is I can beat that number and I can beat it very easily. And if I am doing any longer journeys or I'm doing any kind of A road journeys, I can easily get over 30. The highest I have achieved is around 34.5 miles per gallon. But even so, that's still pretty low when compared to its rivals. And this is where I recommend that KGM need to seriously look at hybridization. I'm not talking a mild hybrid and I'm not talking a plug-in, just a full hybrid system. Get a 2.5 kilowatt hour battery in there with a single motor and all of a sudden you're going to see those economy numbers improve. Try and get some sort of hybrid setup with this engine if you can. However, there is the alternative where you can go for the full electric version of the Torres. And I did put a link at the beginning of the video for you to click on if you wanted to watch it. If, however, you're now considering it, well, just click up again and I'll take you straight to it. So when it comes to the engine and the performance, it's a nice, lively engine. I do like it with the gearbox. It's responsive, but the economy is just a massive letdown particularly in this very highly competitive class. Now, when it comes to the Torres's ride and refinement, I'm gonna say, just like the engine, it's not too bad, but rivals out there are better. Now, at low speed, it does feel a bit fidgety and unsettled. You can feel the bumps and imperfections come through. Fortunately, these seats are very comfortable and they do take a big sting of vi and vibration out from the road. But if you go over any potholes or manhole covers at low speed, you can get quite a big boom and vibration coming into the cabin. But if you start speeding up, you do find that the Torres does settle down. However, some of those little bumps and imperfections in the road can make their way into the cabin. But for the most part, you tend to hear them. The only thing I would say is if you are driving on a road which you know is going to be littered with ruts and potholes and things like that, it won't be the most pleasant experience driving the Torres. Again, 
that's why I recommend the K30's alloy wheels because they're 18's and not 20's so you'd have a little bit more sidewall to help you out there as you're driving. Also I'm very keen to kind of find out what the EV version is like to drive because being a heavier car having to carry all that extra weight with the batteries and everything I'm wondering if the suspension is going to be a bit more compliant but you'll have to watch that review to find out because I haven't driven it yet that will be later on this week and then comes the refinement now I'll be honest the engine is a real positive it does settle down and it does kind of disappear you don't really get much in the way of wind noise from the wing mirror and the a pillar only at high speed and it's just a little bit that comes through it's really just tire roar that comes through into the cabin so that's the main thing that you can hear but one of the big things i have noticed in the torres even though it's not a named or branded system the stereo is actually pretty decent and it does a very good job of just kind of keeping away some of those outside noises so that's one blessing with the torres but yeah when it comes to the ride and refinement and i'm driving through a village now which i know has not got the best roads you do find like i said at lower speed you can feel them but it does settle down at higher speed so it can become a pleasant motorway cruiser now when it comes to the torres's handling i'm gonna say straight away this is not a sporty suv it definitely is a family friendly suv now the steering wheel is a lovely size and shape i do like the thickness of it and the quality of the leather as well and it is perforated on the top to give it that little bit of a sporty edge we have got three drive modes to choose from we got normal sport and winter so that deals with things like loss of traction due to ice and that but you know what i wouldn't even bother putting it in sport just leave it in normal and just drive about because all it does is put a little bit of weight in the steering and just makes the engine just a tiny bit more responsive under your right foot but when you chuck it into the corners there is a little bit of roll and lean it does feel predictable and on the front wheel drive version i could imagine in the wet it will want to push wide and understeer but it's just not a car to chuck into the corners with huge levels of excitement because you don't get the rewards from it this is just a family friendly suv to get you from a to b with your family and your luggage in as a relaxing way as possible now the steering wheel itself or should i say the steering kind of feel I'm going to say it's absolutely fine. There's a nice bit of assistance there with the power steering. It's not too light, so it feels over assisted. I mean, I don't feel 100% connected to the front wheels, but I don't feel like I'm in a video game either. There's a nice amount of weight in here that I just kind of feel as though I am in control of the car, but it is light enough to make parking the Torres really easy, thanks to that kind of blocky slabbed shape to the car. I have got things such as front and rear parking sensors and one of the big highlights on the Torres has definitely been the reversing camera. The clarity I've been hugely impressed with with this type of vehicle. I've driven cars that are twice the price of this and the image quality is not as good. Even at night the image quality is still sharp and it's not too noisy. I am hugely impressed with the reversing camera on the Torres so again it will make parking an absolute doddle but when it comes to just general handling it's absolutely fine for everyday driving like I said this is no way a sporty SUV this is a family friendly one designed to get you from A to B in as comfortable and relaxing way as possible so with my time in the Torres what have been some of the highlights and some of the little niggles I need to let you guys know about well highlights have definitely been the looks this has actually broken the record for the quickest or should I say shortest amount of time that someone has asked me about the car and that was previously held by a Genesis it took about 15 seconds for me to get out of the car and start walking into the shop before I had somebody asking me what was that car I was driving because let's be honest when you look around the car 
The only badges are Sangyong badges and they're on the center caps and the steering wheel. And then on the front of the car, there's no badge. It just says Torres on the front. And then on the back, it says Torres as well with a little KGM in the corner. So you are gonna get a lot of people asking you, what is that car that you're driving? And I'm looking forward to having the electric version of the Torres to see, because the styling is different, if I get the kind of same amount of responses and reactions I've had with this ICE version. So I really do like that. I love the fact as well that these screens here, they actually do work. Like I said before, they are very Hyundai Group-esque in the way that they are laid out. But you know what? If it works, then do it. The infotainment system has been a massive positive and surprise for me because, well, I just wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. Now, it's not all perfect, though. I have found that Apple CarPlay, every so often, wants to disconnect. And that can be a little bit annoying because it can be at any time. Sometimes it's after two minutes, sometimes it's after about 10.50. Also, in regards to the display screen, I don't know why, but every time I get into the Torres and start driving, approximately five minutes in, the tire pressure system comes up. It's not giving me a warning, it's just letting me know what the tire pressures are. Every single time, about five minutes after I'm driving. And then, one of the big bonuses when it comes to the safety systems, unlike Hyundai Group vehicles, if I go one mile an hour over the speed limit, it doesn't bong, bing, and shout at me. But, if you have the radar guided cruise on, and you kind of put some steering inputs in, or you put your foot down to kind of accelerate, it does let you know on the screen. And you've probably heard a couple of the bings and bongs whilst I've been driving, because I've put a little bit of steering input in, I've kind of gone near the white line, and it's basically shouted at me for it. Actually, one little niggle I have found is that when you have the radar guided cruise on, and let's just say you slow down, you tap on the brake, and then you want to resume and get back up to the speed you're at, this car is in no rush to do so. And that's again another reason why you end up putting your foot on the accelerator. You get a little kind of warning that pops up to let you know that it's accelerating, but it's not the car doing it. And then, yes, you can get yourself up to that main speed. Oh, there you go. Yep, steering input and deactivated by me. Oh, one other little niggle is if you are driving and you kind of stop and want to go into reverse, you can't just kind of flick it up and it goes straight into reverse. You've got to do it twice. So you've got to go from drive to neutral to reverse and vice versa. Because if I want to go from reverse then to drive, I've got to go reverse, neutral, then drive. It's only when the car is in park that you go up or down, it will go directly into drive or reverse. So that again is a tiny little niggle but it's one of those things that could catch you off guard where you kind of just sit there, think you're in drive, put your foot down on the, with your right foot and then all of a sudden the engine just revs. So that's just something to be aware of there. The niggles are quite few and far between. It's just the things like the Apple um, CarPlay disconnecting, getting those kind of constant beeps and bongs from other areas of the safety system. But, no, other than that, I've been really impressed. It's very spacious, plenty of cubby spaces. The infotainment system works. I do like this screen here. Again, it is very Hyundai Group-esque. But yeah, I think it's time really we um, move on to the conclusion. So, what are my thoughts on the KGM Torres? Well, in some areas, it is really, really good. In other areas, it's very good, but in some areas it does need improving. Now, the fact that this car is the most practical in its class, looks the way it does, is a massive bold statement from KGM. Only a Korean brand could really actually create a car that pays homage to the SUVs of yesteryear and have all these kind of styling tweaks on the car, which basically have no purpose or function. Only a Korean brand, I think, could get away with that. And then we got the fact that we got the biggest boot in class. We got huge amounts of rear passenger space. We got a huge amount of standard equipment 
I think is again another highlight to the car. An infotainment system that works when it comes to things like dual zone climate control. That is just a big surprise and I cannot wait to kind of see what KGM come out in later months and years, you know, because this is a brilliant system. But that engine, as wonderful and as lively and as responsive as it is, I'm sorry KGM, you've got to whack some sort of hybridization to it. And like I said, not a mild or plug-in hybrid, a full hybrid. Because that economy will go up and then you'll have a car that's really competitive in this segment. But there are other positives as well. We have got that five year, 100,000 mile warranty. Not quite best in class, but very good in class. And like I said, the practicality are just huge highlights on the Torres. So like I said, if you are after a hugely practical car, and like I said as well, this will be a brilliant car for those on motability, for those that need to have adaptations for the boot, perhaps a winch or something installed, so you can lift a wheelchair or a mobility scooter into the boot, that is a massive thing. But I would say, even before I've driven it, I would say that perhaps the EVX could be the way to go. Even though I've not driven it, it, comes, it arrives actually in two days. So if you are on social media, keep an eye out for some of those reels that I've put up. Because i got a feeling that's going to be a bit more of a standout car than the ICE version. I really do like this Torres and this ICE version of the Torres. But, yeah, the economy just needs working on. That's the big thing. The engine and the economy. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the all new KGM Torres. And it's definitely a fun, bold statement from the Korean brand. As always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. Of course, if you've got any questions about the Torres and my time with it, please put them down in the comments section below and I'll do my utmost to answer. And of course, yes, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and X, Think Threads as well. And yes, don't forget to follow on there as well. So guys, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful day. I have enjoyed the Torres, but I am very much looking forward to the EV version later this week. But I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you all in the next video. So take care and bye-bye.